Hello and welcome to this learning video. As you know that we were discussing about the isoparametric problem. So in this learning video, we are going to take a problem on it. Okay, so let us see what this problem says. So this problem says determine a function y of x as usual such that the functional is extremum with isoparametric constraint and the boundary conditions. Okay, so how we start with such problems? We all are aware of the problem of the type like this. So we can write like let f is equal to what is f? x square plus y dash square. What is g? g is my y square. So the very first thing that you can do with the help of this is to make the functional correct. Therefore, f is equal to f plus lambda g, where what is lambda? Where lambda is Lagrange, Lagrange multiplier, where lambda is Lagrange multiplier. Therefore, f is equal to, what is my small f? This x square plus y dash square plus lambda times y square okay this is my f once i can write up once you have written the f dash you can able to make a make a functional or construct a functional therefore we construct we construct a functional we construct a functional j is equal to what is it j is equal to integration 0 to 1 f plus lambda g dx that is that is j is equal to integration 0 to 1 x square plus y dash square plus lambda y square dx okay now once you get this f now you can able to write what now you can able to write down the extremal or you can able to write the euler's equation for extremal so before that let us find out first of all del f by del y so what is del f by del y del f by del y no term of y no term of y yes there is a term of y so 2 lambda y simple now del f by del y dash so what is del f by del y dash is there a term of y dash no yes there is a term of y in the second term so this is 2y dash plus 0 okay now you just need to write down the Euler's equation Therefore, Euler's equation for f is, what is that? Del f by del y minus ddx of del f by del y dash is equal to 0. Okay? Now you have all these values, you just substitute what is this del f by del y, del f by del y is 2 lambda y minus ddx of what is del f by del y dash, 2y dash is equal to 0, okay. Now you can uh, divide throughout by 2 and taking the derivative from here, you will be getting What you will be getting, it is like dividing by 2. So, this is lambda y minus y double dash is equal to 0. So, this is like that is y double dash is equal to, sorry, this is y double dash minus lambda y is equal to 0. So, writing this as uh, d square, so this would be like d square minus lambda 
operating on y is equal to 0 where this d stands for derivative with respect to x right now you can solve this by taking its auxiliary equation so what is its auxiliary equation its auxiliary equation is put d square equal to m so we'll be getting m square is e m square minus lambda is equal to 0 this is sturm Liouville's equation this is sturm Liouville's equation and this can be solved by taking the value of lambda to be minus of a square okay lambda is equal to minus of a square so m square minus of minus a square equal to 0 okay that is m square is equal to minus of a square therefore m is equal to plus minus a i once you get the value of m to be plus minus a i then you need to remember the if the roots are complex then what would be the solution or the complementary function so as right hand side is zero so you can directly write down the uh, solution or the extremal y is equal to e a it is like e to the power what is that zero x into a cos a x plus b sine a x okay where a and b are constant so what is e to the power zero is one that's why i was uh, not interested in writing this uh, thing i can write that is y is equal to a cos ax plus b sin ax this is the problem okay say this is to be my equation number one now i'm going to make use of the given condition to get the values of constant so apply the first condition you can write here given what is given to us y of zero is equal to zero and y of 1 is also equal to 0 so apply 1 by 1 y of 0 is equal to 0 implies put x is equal to 0 y equal to 0 so this is 0 is equal to a cos 0 is 1 plus b sin 0 is 0 so this implies a is equal to 0 okay now apply the second one the moment you apply the second condition the moment you apply the second condition it would be y of 1 is equal to 0 implies already a is 0 okay so i can make use of this equation by putting a is equal to 0 so y of 1 is equal to 0 implies 0 a is already 0 so 0 into cos ax plus what is b b is constant we have to find out sine sine x okay cos a x is equal to 1 so this is sine a right okay now we have what we are getting here is uh, b sine a is equal to 0 now we have b sine a is equal to 0 now product is 0 means any one of them is 0 right but but b being arbitrary constant cannot be 0 means what is 0 this implies sin a is 0 so what is a a is equal to sin inverse of 0 right now if a is sin inverse of 0 so this would be what is sin inverse of 0 n pi where n is equal to 0 1 2 and so on so what is my a my a comes out to be n pi therefore this a is equal to n pi n is equal to 1 2 
3 and so on right now I will be putting these values in equation number 1 so equation 1 implies what does it imply equation a will imply y is equal to a is 0 so this term is 0 completely now we have b into sine what is a a is n pi x so y is equal to b sine n pi x say this is to be my equation number 2 now we have to find out now only one uh, one unknown is there which is only which is only this b and we have to find out this b so what we can do we can make use of this isoperimetric constraint to find out b okay so now integration 0 to 2 is that integration 0 to 2 let me check no it's integration 0 to 1 because these are the values so integration 0 to 1 what is that y square but we have y like this so substitute y square dx is equal to 2 implies integration 0 to 1 what is y square b square sine square n pi x dx right now as you know that we cannot find out directly the integration of this so what you can do is to find out the integration of this you can just uh, apply the formula so i am taking b square outside integration of what is sine square theta 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 so this is like 1 minus cos 2 what is theta n pi x upon 2 dx simple now what you gonna do is now you can easily find out the uh, and this is equal to 2 this is equal to 2 correct now you just integrate this so the moment you integrate this is b square by 2 what is integration of 1 x what is integration of cos is a sine 2 n pi x divide by the coefficient of this 2 n pi is equal to 2 0 to 1 now apply the limits upper limit minus lower limit the moment you apply the upper limit minus lower limit you will be getting this is same as b square by 2 into put x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 so this is 1 minus what is it sine x is equal to 0 sine 2 and pi is 0 so upper limit will gives you 0 minus lower limit is 0 minus sine 0 is 0 okay is equal to 2 so i am getting b square is equal to 2 2 okay b square by 2 is equal to 2 that is b square is equal to 4 therefore b is equal to plus minus 2 okay so i am getting b is equal to plus minus 2 so just substitute this in equation 2 therefore equation 2 becomes equation 2 becomes what is that equation 2 becomes y is equal to plus minus 2 into sine n pi x and this is the required solution to the given isoperimetric problem where you can specify n is positive integer n is positive integer and this is the required extrema this is the required this is the required extrema or this is the required function this is the required function y equal to y of x so that this is extrema with respect to the or subject to the isoperimetric constraint and which satisfies the boundary, boundary conditions. So I hope this problem is clear to you. So thank you for watching this learning video and have a good day. Thank you.